Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Breakfast with Unity. Um, so, on today's episode, we're going to be doing Time Slow. And I'm going to get right into it because I'm not sure if we're going to have enough time, but this is going to be fun. We should have all the time in the world because we're going to slow it. But uh, So, I've already uh, got some music for this one because I want uh, you to hear how the uh, music stuff sounds. And, um, and so... Uh, so let's just get started here. So we're going to be doing something very similar to what we did with Camera Shake. This is going to be a uh, Ghetto Singleton just because of time. And uh, so I'm just going to copy over the Camera Shake script first. We're just going to duplicate this and put it into Time Slow. You can download the project files at the link in the description and they'll have everything up to date. They'll include this music track as well, although you're welcome to use your own if you're following along. So uh, what are we doing? I'm going to call this Time Slow is what I'm going to call it. So let's go in here. We're going to rename camera shake to time slow. We're going to do that again for its instance variable. Uh, so that should solve the instance thing. Um, we're going to be kind of following this, although we're going to have to use um, uh, coroutines because I want to actually smoothly transition in and out of our um, time scale. So <clears throat> though the concept is going to be very similar. So instead of amplitude and duration, we're going to have um, Yeah, let's do, um, let's do, yeah, duration we still want. Yeah, this is actually going to be, so, uh, time scale and duration. And we might also want to do a float, um, uh, what is it called? We're going to do transition time. Transition time. All right, so, um, and what we're going to be doing is... We're going to be changing this into an I enumerator. I enumerator. And we this means it shouldn't be void. So save. So that means we're going to return an I enumerator, which allows us to use this as a coroutine. Um, and in start, uh, we don't want to just start this thing. So so we need to have something that uh, actually makes this shake. So before we call this shake, we're going to call this uh, actually time slow, because this is what's going to do the actual logic. We're going to also create a uh, public void um, time slow, uh, or slow time is what I'm going to call it. Time slow dot slow time. That's going to be fun. Um, so, uh, all this is going to do is it's just going to start, start coroutine actually, and we're going to do it the, the real way this time. We're going to do actually time slow because we have so many variables we need to. And we need to pass in some uh, some parameters here. So um, so slow time should actually also have these same parameters. Do actually time slow and then just pass through time scale, duration, and transition time. Oops. That one would mess us up real good. All right, so I'm going to hit save. And uh, then what we're going to actually do is do what we need to do. So the trick with time scale is if we start using time.deltaTime in our calculations, it actually changes when we change time scale. So we have to use time.realTime since, since startup, or we have to multiply out or divide out the uh, time scale um, from time.deltaTime. I'm going to go with the real time since startup approach. So this is going to look a little different than, than some of our uh, coroutine stuff has. I'm missing something here. I need another one of these. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, uh, uh, float initial time, and this is going to be equal to, um, time dot real time since startup. And then we're going to do float, uh, T, and this is going to be our time variable, and I'm going to set this equal also to, I'm just going to set it equal to initial time. It doesn't actually matter if we set it equal to this or that. It's going to be the same at this very moment. So, um, so we've got, uh, T and it, it equals, uh, initial time. And so now we're going to do a uh, while T minus initial time is less than, uh, transition time. So we're going to do transition time first. And what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, time dot time scale. This is the, what does all the magic um, equals. And then we're going to do a lerp. We're going to do a uh, math f dot lerp. This is linear interpolation. We're going to be going from um, 
the initial time scale, which is 1.0F. We're going to be going to our new time scale, so time scale. And T in this case is um, T minus initial time divided by transition time. And so what this means is as time progresses, oh yeah, and we're going to need a, a T. Oh yeah, I guess we don't need to keep T at all. We can just use time dot real time since startup. So let's just do that. Time dot real time since startup minus initial time. And then we go to do the same thing here. All right. And then we're going to do a yield return null. So that's the first part. That's just transitioning into the time scale. Then we're going to wait there. So we're going to do a uh, yield wait for, oh wait, this wait for seconds probably will not work because it's going to be relying on the time scale. So um, we're going to three while loops here. We're just going to go the in the, so this is going to be transition in, um, hold for duration, transition out. So um, in between here, we're going to need to set initial time again. So we're going to set initial time to real time since startup so that we can use the same logic. And, um, and we don't need to redeclare as a float. That's the reason it's underlined. So we're going to save. Um, and what we're going to do here is we don't need to do anything. We can just yield return null. Um, and then we're going to do transition out and it's going to look exactly the same except for we're going to set the lerp back to the normal time scale. Time scale. All right, so, um, and we want to be sure in between that these are working. So when we point, we actually also want to make sure that uh, time dot time scale exactly equals what we wanted it to. So time uh, equals time scale. This is our time scale variable here versus their time scale variable, which is under time. And we do the same thing here where we change it to time dot time scale equals 1.0 f and um, we don't need any of these things we're not going to need our update script here because this handles all the logic now and um, I'm not going to have a stop shaking variable so the other thing we're going to do is we're going to kill our coroutines if we call this so we're going to do um, stop all coroutines. That way we won't, uh, if we call it twice, it won't mess us up too bad. Um, it will change our time scale to 1.0 immediately if you click it twice, but we can fix that on another episode or something. Um, so let's see if we got any errors. Looking good. That was a lot of typing for no errors. That's nice. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, need to invoke this somehow. So I didn't create a nice nifty way of testing this. Um, I guess what we can do is we can... Uh, well, we don't need any of these things. All right, let's just create a quick test for this. So we're going to... Uh, wait, initial position does not exist in this context. Oh, yeah, we don't need those. Save. So I'm going to create a new script, C sharp script, and we're going to call this, uh, I'm going to call it um, activate time slow. Actually, we don't even need to do that. We don't even need a separate script to test this, I don't think, because we've got the new Unity input system. So let's, let's see how this works. Let's see if the new Unity UI system can save us. So we're going to create a, um, a UI button. We're going to wait while Unity figures out what it needs to do for that. All right, and so if we go into the game, we've got a button. Cool. I'm okay with that positioning for right now. So all we're going to do is we're going to make this button. We're going to go into Inspector. And um, I'm just going to attach this script to it. Um, 
you can you can basically do the uh, from a script you can access this just time slow dot instance dot uh, slow time and it will do the thing that you want it to do. Um, we're going to try using it through this button thing. I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work, but on click we're going to add here and we're going to um, I'm going to create a empty object we call this time manager time manager and we're going to throw time slow on him and so the button here we're going to grab time manager we're going to use uh, time slow what is it called okay we can't use it here because it has too many um, it has too many variables Let's make it so that we can use it here, though, because that's somewhat useful. So we're going to have some defaults here. So we're going to create a version of slow time that doesn't require any of these. And we're going to create some defaults. We're going to do uh, public uh, float uh, uh, new time scale equals, we're going to set this to 0.5f to start with. We're going to do public float duration, and we're going to set this to 5. O F and public float um, transition time equals 0 0.5 F. So it should take a half second to get to 0.5, then wait five seconds, then take a half second to get back to normal time. So um, we've done all that, and uh, what do we want to do? So we created all these things. Time scale does not exist in the current context. Um, oh yeah, so we need to actually set these to our, so we're gonna use new time scale, transition time here. And we probably shouldn't, we probably should do this so that, um, so that we don't mess things up too much. Ah, I don't like it there. Um, let's do default. Default time scale, default duration. This will make more sense. And default transition time. So save that. We're going to actually use them here now. So bam, bam, bam. And uh, so this is if you call it with no fun, no, no factors. Uh, it will do that. Perfect. That'll work. So let's save this. Let's see if it compiles. It did good. And uh, we're not gonna be able to see if this is working, so I'm just gonna create, um, I'm gonna create a ball at the top of the screen. No, that's probably not the best way of doing this. Um, we need to create a spawner real quick. So I'm just gonna create a spawner. Spawn objects really quick. So public game object, object to spawn public float delay equals 1.0f um, start invoke spawn delay we're gonna call this spawn and very quickly just do instantiate object to spawn to spawn um, transform, transform lowercase, there it is, dot position, um, quaternion dot identity, that'll work. So this way we'll be able to see if something's actually moving. So we're going to hit save. I'm going to quickly create a sphere, 3D object sphere. We're going to take this sphere and we're going to, we're going to put light in the scene while we're at it, directional light. We're going to um, give this thing a physics rigid body. And so this thing should have gravity now. It does. Cool. I'm going to create a prefab of it in our time slow thing here. We're going to delete our sphere. Um, we're then going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call it spawner. And I'm going to just put it at like Y10 um, or something. So that's just above the screen. Then we're going to put uh, spawn objects on it and throw um, our sphere in here. So if we hit play right now, we should get spheres spawn, spawning and falling through the screen. Perfect. We're going to finally go, go our button. We're going to grab a function, 
time slow, and we should see slow time. There it is, slow time. So if we hit play and it starts going and we hit button, it didn't do anything, did it? Or did it? Okay, it did, I think. No, we didn't repeat things. That might help. Oh, I really hope this works. All right, so it's going, it's going. We hit the button. There we go. It slowed down. That didn't seem like it was for five seconds. 1,001, 1,000, yeah, that was not five seconds. So why was it not five seconds? So, oh, it's because we're using transition time for everything. So we want duration here, and then we'll use transition time a second time. So if we hit save, we're gonna hit play. So we do slow time and it slows down. And after five seconds, it speeds back up. So now let's actually do it with, with music here. We're gonna put uh, main, this, we're gonna drop this on the main camera so it'll just start playing. And uh, you should hear music here. Now, it's not going to slow down when we hit the button right now. It will just keep playing the normal way. And that's because, by default, it doesn't actually change anything for the music stuff. But we can change that very easily. So we're going to do um, change pitch to time scale. We're going to create this script real quick. This is a real quickie script. I love it. So this one is just an update. We set... Um, an update, all we set is... Um, time dot uh, or we do audio dot uh, pitch equals time dot time scale so if you put this on any object that has an audio source um, it will change the pitch based on the current time scale so if we attach this to our main camera now and hit play we'll have music and if we hit the button it slows down It doesn't seem to be translucently though. That's annoying. I think some of my calculations are wrong here. Um, at least it didn't sound like it was transitioning. So let's see, 0. 0.5. Here, let's change the defaults real quick. So if we go to our um, time manager, we can change the defaults. Let's make the transition time like 2.0 f, 2.0. So now it'll take a long time to actually get down there. Oh wait, that's the time scale. So this will speed it up actually. But that's not what we wanted. Um, so let's set it to point 0.2 here, and then let's set the transition time to 2. There we go. Play. Oh, it did work. Or it transitioned too fast. Oh, that time it was just instant, it felt like at least. So yeah, there's definitely something going wrong here. Um, time scale, real time since startup, minus initial time. Oh, it's because order of operations is important. And we'll do the same thing here. We need to make sure that the subtraction happens before the division. Save, hit play. There we go. Yeah. That's how we want it. So let's try it with our default values again, 0. 0.5, um, 0. 0.5, and duration, let's set that to 2, and then just hit play. There we go. Alright, well that's something for you guys to play with now. So I'm going to save the project, so we're going to call this time slow, and we're going to put it into time slow. Save. And that's how you create a basic time flow system. Um, have fun with it, play around with it, uh, try, try, try some things, and let me know what you think. If you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Thank you for joining us this morning, and I'll see you tonight with um, our standard Cooking with Unity hour-long show, where we're going to be continuing um, the shoot the light gun game project. Have a good one, and see you guys then.